Well, hello there. <laughs> it is the first day of our second semester, so I thought it would be a good day to try out a vlog and show you what a day in the life of a virtual teacher looks like. If you're new here, my name is Brett, and I am a virtual high school special ed teacher, and I am virtual because I work at a virtual school, not because of the pandemic, but we're virtual all the time. So I was a virtual teacher before virtual teaching was cool. <laughs> and I teach high school special ed. Uh, my kids are in what I guess would be considered like a self-contained classroom if you were in a regular brick and mortar school. Um, but because we are a virtual school that covers an entire state, our department is really large. So we've got several hundred kids. So instead of them being in one classroom all day, we have like a department that they rotate through. So in general, I teach reading classes and then they'll see, you know, they'll kind of rotate through. There's like six or seven of us um, that teach. So it's kind of like a self-contained classroom, but they do get to switch classes. So it's cool. I love it. <laughs> uh, today is the first day of our second semester and I have not done a video in a while because of pandemic stuff and it's just been crazy and let's see it's like 7 30 now my first class starts at 8 it's a new class for me because it's only a semester long class um, it, and I'll have to do a video on how <laughs> I totally backfired um, my classes because I got rid of one and I ended up getting three more, but that's a whole nother story. So it is social studies. So it's a new class for me. I'm really excited about it. Um, I first though have to go wake up my own children because I already woke up my high schooler and he got on the bus. He's at school. My other three kids are home virtually for the next two weeks at least. They have been going back and forth and back and forth all year long and it's really difficult <laughs> really difficult so i gotta go wake them up get them ready so that they can log on to their online classes and hopefully not bother me for the day so i will be back right before my eight o'clock class to kind of tell you a little bit about what that's going to look like see you all soon go grab your coffee and we'll be right back all right so i've gotten my second cup of coffee i am back and i am about to be starting my social studies class i'm really excited about this class because I um, get a co-teacher. So because the class sizes are so large, um, I get a co-teacher. So it's just a long-term sub, but she's awesome. And so I will have her for my period one class. Um, and then I'll also, she's going to be in my period four reading class as well. So both of those classes have like 16, 17 kids, which for our department is large because of the population that we serve. Um, the reason our classes are so large this year is number one, we've had tons of new enrollments because of the pandemic and people, kids who want to stay virtual and that sort of stuff. But also we like reorganize the way that the department works. I'm not a fan. <laughs> I'll just say that I'm not a fan. I'm hoping that we go back <laughs> to what it was like before. And those of you that are special ed teachers, you may have had this dilemma where you're like, oh, it would be so great if I could just teach, right? That was, that's, oh, I don't wanna do all the paperwork stuff. So we did that this year. We split the department up and we had like teachers who were just case managers. They just do all the paperwork and the meetings. And then we have teachers who are just teachers. And so they asked us, you know, well, which would you rather be? Of course I was like, oh, I wanna teach. <laughs> that's what I wanna do. Whew, I, I want to go back. <laughs> I would rather teach, like last year I taught three or four live classes a day and then we had like 10, 15 kids on our caseload. So this year the case managers have like 40 kids on their caseload and that's all they do all day, which I wouldn't want to do that. But teaching wise, I'm teaching like five hour long live classes a day. We still have meetings that we have to go to. I still have to like do progress reports you know, for the re, you know, my read the reading goals. I still have to, you know, do um, like when the kids have evaluations or IEPs. I still have to write up like you would with a general ed teacher. I have to write up like the blurb for how they're doing in my class, and so it's just a lot. It's a lot to try and prep five different classes, and I really only have um, like well, I have my half hour lunch, and then I have like an hour 
break after lunch where I can do stuff. And then technically I have an hour after my last class, but by that time my kids are feisty. I have to like start thinking about like dinner and like, it's just a lot, it's a lot to do. So I would like to go back, whatever. We are where we are <laughs> and I love the teaching part. So <laughs> um, yeah, so we did that this year. Um, so I have five, live classes so social studies is my first one but like i said i have this co-teacher coming so i think that'll really help um, with the larger class size because then i can break them up a lot of my kids can't do things independently like they need a lot of support um, so even if i put them into breakout rooms they were constantly like what am i supposed to do how do i do this so like i was taking a lot of time so having somebody else in there who can support in that way i think it's going to be really awesome so social studies is about to start. We are, it's the first day. Normally I would do like the syllabus and stuff like that, but I just, we had an async day yesterday. So I just emailed them like, hey, look over the syllabus. Let's be real, like no, my kids don't look at the syllabus. They, <laughs> the parents don't read the syllabus. I mean, I'm not gonna waste time in class going over that. So I think I will just briefly introduce myself and have um, the co-teacher introduce herself and then we're gonna jump right into our lesson which is all about communities. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, the, I know a lot of these kids because I do have a handful of them I've got in my reading classes, um, but there's a lot of the kids that I don't know. So that's always interesting to jump in and see what that's going to be like. So I'll let you know when I get back. So before the kids get in here, I thought I'd show you really quickly what we are doing in social studies today. So I have the lesson all loaded up. We use Blackboard, so it's all loaded up into Blackboard. And we are going to do um, every day in history, we do like on this day in history. So January 28th is today, and that is the day the Challenger exploded. So we'll just talk about that briefly. And then we are going to warm up asking the kids about where they've traveled. And we're using the McGraw-Hill grade three uh, textbook for this class. Cause as I mentioned, my kids are lower. And our essential question, why does it matter where we live? So we are just going to be talking about maps. I'm gonna have them choose, you know, find the county that they live in on our map. And then we are talking about urban, suburban, and rural communities. So we'll go over all of those and I'll have them discuss kind of what community they live in. Um, and then we're also going to go over some different communities around the world. My kids will not be able to read this independently, so I just kind of snipped the, the pages of the book up there for my own reference, um, but we'll kind of, I'll read through parts of it and we'll talk about it, and then they're gonna go to their breakout rooms and um, try and give me a sentence about what type of community they live in. So do they live in rural, urban, or suburban? It's nice because our kids are spread out all over Pennsylvania. So we will have kids from all the different types of communities. So I really enjoy that because we get a lot of different like perspectives <laughs> from all different types. So that will be good. So that is the plan for social studies. And I will catch you when we're done. All right, so I'm just hopping on here really quickly. I have my green screen on because I put a background of cities and <clears throat> rural areas, urban areas, suburban areas, because that's what we were talking about today in social studies. The lesson went really well, um, but it took a while to get through and check all of their breakout rooms. So I have like two minutes before my next class starts. So I hopped in really quickly to my reading six class and uploaded their slides. We are reading Tuck Everlasting in that class. The kids love this book. Um, so it's always a good time because they are very invested in Winnie and <laughs> the tucks and everything. So I will hop back on here in a little while. That's Friday game day. Oh, yeah. And and plus Friday game day is is like we can play like video games, like ma like math games. Well, that's games. lucky. So can you turn my stuff on? What right now? Yeah. All right, just go. Thank you. Okay, so I only have a quick minute. I finished reading six. The kids are so into this story. It's awesome. It makes my life so much easier. Um, 
there was a whole bunch of issues because it's the first day of the new semester, so kids' classes have changed. So some kids accidentally were put into classes at the same time. So I'm trying to teach the class and trying to message people and trying to get that all figured out. But got sorted. I actually let them leave like 10 minutes early. Usually at the end of class, I do like a breakout room question that they have to answer. And today I was just like, nope, you can go. Um, Tuesdays and Thursdays are my busiest day because I have class at 8, class at 9, and then I have another class at 10. My 10 o'clock class is only Tuesdays and Thursdays, so I'm about to head into that one now. This class is um, a small group. It, there's only th I have three students in it. These kids um, are students that have lots of other services in their day. So they the only like live class time they have is 10 o'clock. Um, I teach it two days a week. Another teacher teaches it three days a week. So I do math and science with them. The rest of their day is spent with other service providers. So they have a lot of needs. Um, so again, they, they are all high school students, but um, we are working on today like shapes. Um, we work on, you know, we've been working on just counting to, you know, 10 or counting to 20. Um, basic addition. Um, trying to like count money has not been going well. Um, and that's something I really would like them to be able to master. They, I could not, the coins, it wasn't working. So right now we've just been working on, like I will in their breakout room or in the classroom um, have like something like a, you know, gum is $1. And then they have to like pull down $1, like from their little wallet that I have up there, they can just pull down a dollar. Or, you know, like ham is $3. And I'm trying to get them to pull down $3. And we've been working on that all year. So we are still working on that. Um, so it's a challenging class. It's a really challenging class. I really enjoy them. Um, but it's hard. It's hard to like try and figure out like how can I get them to master these, you know, concepts that they really are going to need if they're going to live independently. So I'm about to jump into that class and then I jump right back into reading for a reading seven class. So I will probably see you again after I get done my reading seven class on my lunch break. All right. Catch you soon. I'll be in it? No, you cannot be in it. Is it hard? What? Say hi. Hi. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Can you go now? <laughs> Quickly. <laughs> okay, so I was, um, bleh. okay, so on my lunch break right now. Last two classes went well. I had my small group of kids who, um, need a lot of extra help and they there's only two so there's three kids in that group normally but only two came and we worked on shapes so um they just were finding circles and squares and triangles and counting the sides and that sort of thing and then actually i was like gonna end too early there was some extra time so i have my um my pet snake over here <laughs> so i just like was like oh i'm gonna show you some shapes and so i held up like different things from his tank and i was like what shape is this and i held up a little circle thing what shape is that and then i brought the snake out and i put him in a circle and the kids enjoyed that and he's got um i'll show you hold on Bo. so we got him out the kids liked seeing him but bobo also has shapes so we could talk about his shapes. And Bobo is getting really upset with me that I keep um, bringing him out today. He's like, this is my sleep time, get away from me. So I have Bobo, he's a small snake, he stays near me, but I also have a really big snake too. So someday we'll get him out. But let me put Bobo back before he gets upset with me. So um, that was fun, the kids enjoyed that. And then at the end of the class, the one mom said that they had to go because they had to go to beach therapy. I have no idea what beach therapy is, but it sounds amazing. And I want to go to this beach therapy. And I, yeah, I mean, those, the kids in that group go to lots of different therapies and medical appointments and that kind of stuff. That's why they only have like half an hour of instruction from me a day. But beach therapy, I, I don't know, have you ever heard of this? I don't know, but I need to get in on this beach therapy because it just, it sounds wonderful. 
So then I had a quick break and in that break I had to go help all of my other children who were couldn't find their math books and couldn't log into class and quickly run around and get them all situated. And then I had my reading class. And this is the one where we added, they added a co-teacher for me because um, it got, uh, I have like 16 kids this this semester. So we they added the young co-teacher so and she's awesome. So she was able to help me like manage the chat box and those sorts of things and when I put them in a breakout rooms at the end, she was able to go in there and help them um, with that. So that definitely helped a lot and as we go, I'll be able to kind of like now that I know her and how like everything we should be able to I'll be able to give her some more stuff to do as well. So that'll be really cool. That class, that reading class is my highest reading called reading seven but they're like the highest reading level that I have um, most of them are like on grade level or like you know middle school high school grade level readers um, so it's really great we can have like a lot more conversations and a lot more in-depth stuff so we're reading brown girl dreaming in that class um, so we read three poems today and we talked about using sensory language and being able to use the five senses as we're describing things so that we can help people make a visualization in their mind or a movie in their mind um, and so that went really well the kids seemed to really understand that and it went great so now I'm on my lunch break I am starving because every single class I swear today they were talking about pizza and now I'm like I want pizza even though I'm not supposed to have pizza and I've been trying to drink my water but all this talk about pizza <laughs> It's making me really want pizza, even though I'm not supposed to be having all those carbs right now. But I might have to go have some pizza after that. I don't know. I have my hour break coming up. I have lunch and then I have an hour break. And that's normally when I would write my lesson plans for the next week. I try and work on putting all the PowerPoints and lesson plans together during this hour that I have if, if I don't have any meetings. So that's what I'm going to do. And then I've got my last class of the day. So I will check back in with you at the end of the day. Come and go like thoughts of you. Great, so I just finished my last live class of the day, had my planning period, and then did my reading three class. So this is the lowest level I have. It's not the lowest level in our program, but it's the lowest level I have. Um, so these are kids who are working on like basic reading skills, basic reading comprehension. Um, so we they're working through like a decodable story um, that I found in um, CKLA's curriculum um, for third grade. But it's always difficult to find stuff for these kids that is um, like age appropriate. And I'm so glad I came across this story because it's all about a girl looking for a job. So it works really well and it's decodable and it works really well for their age because they're teenagers and will be looking for jobs and all that kind of stuff. So um, they've been doing really well with that story and taking turns reading out loud and all that stuff. So that worked out really well. That class is a hard class because it's just the end of the day. Like by the time that kids get to that point in the day, <laughs> they're just like done. So it's always hit or miss. Um, and today was was good. They were participating. They were answering questions. They were following along. They were all getting on the mic to read. Um, so it doesn't always work out that way in that class. So that was good. Oh, and then in this last class, my supervisor popped in to observe which she does occasionally just so that the kids get used to her so they're not like oh my gosh there's somebody in here so she usually only stays for like 10 minutes or so and and leaves so that actually worked out well today as well <laughs> they were all participating and behaving so a-okay of a day over here if i do have to say so myself so that's my last live class so technically I'm done with live classes i technically still have my contracted hours for another hour um, but Thursdays are the day that I do um, emails to related service personnel because a lot of my kids' IEPs have um, like so many minutes a week that I'm supposed to be collaborating with a speech pathologist or whatever. So I will work on sending those emails out on Thursdays. Um, so that's what I do now. And then usually we have our PLC meeting, but I just got an email that they canceled that for today. So woohoo, I don't have to do that. Um, which works out well because there was another training <laughs> that I wanted to attend at that time anyway. So I'm going to go uh, tune into this training on curriculum mapping. Um, and then after that, it'll be four. I will technically be done. And then I am going to start working on my doctorate coursework. Um, so I have to do two 
discussion posts that are due by midnight. So that is the plan. That is pretty much my day. I have um, one or two Go Go Kid classes tonight at eight. I think from eight to nine, I have Go Go Kid classes. Um, so hopefully I can get done my discussion posts before then so that I can relax after that for an hour before I go to sleep. <laughs> so that's pretty much a day in my life. Yeah, that's how it works. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Some days it goes well, some days it doesn't. But by this time in the day, every day, I'm like tired, I'm done. <laughs> it's a long day to be sitting at the computer and doing live classes for sure. But it is enjoyable, especially when they go well. And today's classes all went pretty well and that doesn't normally happen. So I hope you guys enjoyed my first vlog. And if you liked it, let me know in the comments and I will do some more. And hopefully you are already subscribed. And look, see my children, they know that I'm done at this time and they all, like will converge and be asking me questions and asking for help so I can't get much done. Um, so I will see you guys next time. Make sure you subscribe. Bye. I'm gonna say goodbye. <laughs> Bye.